All right, so let's get started. We should be live, we should be live. Gonna be pretty quick today. Just wanted to kind of fit this in as USA Indoor Championships are starting on, um, well, they're starting tomorrow, Friday, February 16th. Gonna be going down in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, yeah, it's gonna be pretty exciting. We're gonna see how, how things kind of plan out, but yeah, excited to just do some quick predictions on some of the things that are gonna be going down, some of the, um, athletes who are going to be, you know, taking off and doing some amazing things. We're going to see how, you know, things pan out, but let us kind of dive in and uh, take a look. So excited to jump in. We'll make a second as a few more people jump into the chat. Um, excited. All right. Yeah, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get started. So not going to spend too much time today. It's got to Get some uh get, get some quick predictions a little bit um later. I usually come on, on Tuesdays as opposed to you know today on Thursday, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. If you're in here, really appreciate you joining. Um again, we're gonna be doing some quick predictions and previews of the sprints, jumps, and hurdles um at the USATF indoor championships, which is going down tomorrow and Saturday. Um in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Going to be super, super exciting to see how, you know, all these athletes play out. This is interesting because the World Indoor Championships are going to be going down on um, March 1st through 3rd. And a lot of athletes have already committed that if they're making Team USA, then they're going to be competing at the World Indoor Championships. This is a little bit surprising to a degree. I don't know if it's too surprising, but considering it's, it's an Olympic year, um, you would have expected many athletes to probably just skip indoors or skip, you know, USA indoor championships. There are many athletes who are, you know, choosing not to compete, but there's a good amount who are actually going to go ahead and start competing. So let's go ahead and dive into a couple of these fields and see some of these athletes. And yeah, let me know what athletes you're looking forward to. Let me know some of the events that you're looking forward to, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started with some of these quick uh, predictions and some of these results. So we have to start off, of course, with that men's 60 meter dash. Now, this, of course, has been arguably the top event of the season, uh, considering, well, maybe not the top event. The hurdles is definitely the top event. But in terms of the 60 meter dash, I mean, this has been highly, highly anticipated because of both Christian Coleman. Christian Coleman is a um, 2018 World Indoor Champion, 2022 World Indoor Silver Medalist. Um, but He's been, you know, he's committed. He's going for the World Indoor Championships. But then, of course, we also have Noah Lyles. Noah Lyles, he's really had a breakout over the past two seasons, over the past two years when we're talking about the 60-meter dash. Um, and now he is saying that he is committed to, you know, running the 60 meters, not only at USA's, of course, but then also if he makes the team at the World Indoor Championships. He specifically said that, you know, this is the only team that he hasn't made, right? Um, the 100 meters, the... Um, the 200 meters, world championships, Olympics, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But he hasn't made a world indoor championship team. So we're going to see how things kind of play out. But I think for the most part, um, and I'll talk about some of the other athletes as well. Yeah, good good note, um, actual random uh, regarding Ronnie Baker that, yeah, just remember he wasn't he wasn't in Milrose. Yeah, Ronnie Baker wasn't in Milrose. So, um, but quick note, when I'm talking about, when we're talking about the 60 meter dash, Christian Coleman versus Noah Lyles. Now, Look at their credentials. Christian Coleman, of course, is the, like I said, 2018 World Indoor Champion in the 60-meter dash. He's also the silver medalist from 2022. If you remember that race, that's when he uh, finished second place just behind, literally getting edged out by um, Marcel Jacobs in uh, Serbia. But additionally, look at his top times. Christian Coleman is a world record holder in the 60-meter dash. He's also run 6.37 seconds on two occasions, in addition to that world record of 6.34. So he has multiple credentials. He's run 641, 642. He's run 64 multiple times. Christian Coleman is the definition of a 60 meter sprinter, right? Obviously, he's a 100 meter world outdoor champion from 2019. So, not saying he doesn't have credentials there, but Christian Coleman is the 60 meter, like the consummate performer. And in my opinion, I think Christian Coleman is going to get the win at USA's. Um, you know, uh, tomorrow, when we're talking about this weekend in Albuquerque. Now, even though right now, Christian, or let me just jump over to the USA list, but even though right now, Christian Coleman only ran 6.51 seconds at Milrose, and of course, Noah Lyles has run uh, 6.44. Um, I don't put, I. it's crazy, but I don't actually put too much stock into the race at Milrose. 
um, and specifically in terms of the time at Milrose, right? If one thing that is really notable is that look at someone like Akeem Blake. Akeem Blake ran 6.45 seconds at the New Balance Indoor Grand Prix to finish second place to Noah Lyles. But then he came to the Milrose games and he only ran, um, I forget exactly what it was, but 6.5 something, right? So it's not like... Um, it's not like all these athletes were running extremely fast when we're talking about the men's 60 meter dash field there. So to a degree, I'm not going to put as much, as much stock into that specific time of 6.51 and compare it directly to 6.44. Um, so in my opinion, I think Christian Coleman is going to take the win here. Christian Coleman is a super, cons like, I, like I said, super consistent when we're talking about the 60 meter dash. He is the, you can argue the best starter in the world. I mean, aside from like who, uh, Su Bing Tang, right? Su Bing Tang has that crazy, crazy start, but Christian Coleman has a start. He has that drive phase. He actually even said after the race in at the Milrose games that he was, um, he didn't get a great start. He said that he, you know, had a little bit of a shaky kind of first 20 meters coming out the blocks. And then that second half was really, really well. So in my opinion, I think he knows he's going to be, he's, you know, this past week, he's fixed things up and he's prepared to go for the win here. I don't think he just wants to make the team. I think he wants to get the win. And in my opinion, I think Christian Coleman is going to get the win. Now, what does that mean for Noah Lyles? Of course, I'm picking Noah Lyles to get uh, to make the team and finish in second place, um, but to actually make the world indoor team. Not saying that he's going to, you know, falter or anything like that. But I do have to put some stock into the fact that if we're looking at kind of a head to head, I'm just going to go to 60 meters head to head. They've actually raced a couple times, uh, Christian and Noah. And every single time Noah has finished behind Christian, um, Christian, every single time he's got the win, even if of course, you know, they raced last year at the Milrose games, um, in 2023, that's when Noah got DQ'd. But of course he did finish second place to Christian in that race. Milrose games, 2022, Christian did win that. And then even if we go back to 2018, right, Noah wasn't consistently running the 60 meters in a way that he is now, right? He wasn't the hundred meter, 60 meter performer he is now. Um, but again, he still lost to Christian. If I'm talking about the 60 meters, I, I got to pick Christian Coleman for the win over Noah Lyles. That doesn't mean that there could be an upset, at least again, in my, in my opinion, relative to what I'm thinking, but I think Christian Coleman's going to go get the win here. And I don't know, in terms of time, I, I don't know. I think in the six, four range is still likely, but we have to remember that this is going down in Albuquerque, New Mexico, right? So there is that little bit of extra altitude. Um, this is actually where Christian Coleman ran. I think this is where Christian Coleman ran uh, 6.37 or did maybe 6.34 seconds. Yeah. 6.34 seconds is um, he ran this at Albuquerque in 2018. Um Yep, in Albuquerque. So, you know, this is this is his race. This is his race. So we don't see. I, I think Christian Coleman's going to get the win, and then Noah Laz is going to come second place, but in a pretty good race, hopefully. A couple sleepers, and then I want to get to some of these comments. A couple sleepers that I'm looking at. Look at Kobe Hilton. Kobe Hilton, this year he's run 6.53, which is not too far. Um, well, actually, yeah, he might have actually run a little bit faster. I could uh, cross-confirm that. But he's run, uh, he's run, you know, opened up pretty well this year. He's run a couple of good races. So really looking to see what Colby Hilton does. Ronnie Baker, I'm keeping an eye on him. Uh, like you noted, right, he didn't run in Milrose, but he did run pretty well. He got third place at the New Balance Indoor Grand Prix. So we're going to see what Ronnie Baker is able to pull out here. So looking at those two kind of guys, Demet Kemp, he's also a kind of sleeper where he's, I think he's won the USA Indoor Championships. Could be back in 2000 and, and, uh, 2019 or 2020 one or something like that. One of those years, um, I think Demet Kemp did win the uh, USA Indoor. So a couple other guys in the mix, always shout out to someone like Kendall Williams. Um, and then also Emmanuel Wells. Now, I was a little bit surprised. I actually did not have Emmanuel Wells on my radar. He's run 6.48 seconds this year, Emmanuel Wells, but he isn't as consistent in terms of those times, right? So this year he's run 6.72, 6.6, 6.59, and then he dropped down to 6.48. So it's, it's amazing. I'd love to see him replicate that, but I want to see some consistency, right? I want to see, you know, someone like him really, really get consistent before I say, okay, this guy is a true 6.4 runner. So we're going to see how that kind of pans out. But 60 meter dash, again, I have Christian Coleman taking the win. And then I have Noah Lyles coming in second place, both of them to make that team. And then um, look at uh, Kobe Hilton and Ronnie Baker, Demet Kemp, some of those sleepers there. Um, okay, 648 was a false start for Emmanuel Wells. Okay, got it. Yeah, I heard about uh, it being potentially a flyer, but yeah, I mean, I got, he got the mark. It, it sticks. So maybe, maybe it's a. Uh, 
the Terrence Jones situation, right? Who knows? But shout out to shout out to um, Emmanuel, definitely there. Um, yeah, so actual random, right? I wouldn't sleep on Ronnie Baker, Baker either. Again, he got third place at the New Balance Indoor Grand Prix, and he looks to be getting back in form. I'm, again, I'm, I don't even know if he was on the start list for Milrose, but even though he wasn't there, I'm not putting too much stock in there. I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, Ronnie Baker does. Um, yeah, Melanie, I agree. I'm Well, I don't know. I, I like the 300, but you know, I think it's cool, especially when we're talking about world indoors. Yeah, let, let's stick with the, the world indoor events, and then maybe those off years, they can do the 300s. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Ronnie, yes, Ronnie has a second fastest indoor 60 meter time yet, right? Um, he has the, I can actually pull this up very quickly. I'm going to pull up the all time list, but he may be the, oops, not top. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah. He may be the, um, one of the fastest all time. He's run six, four, two, I think number three all time because, um, yeah, Maurice. Yeah, there we go. Number three all time is Ronnie Baker. So Maurice Green has run six three nine, and that's the record that yeah, that's the record that Christian Coleman beat. And then Ronnie Baker has run six four zero. But if you remember Ronnie Baker, two thousand eighteen, he's the world indoor bronze medalist in the sixty meter dash. If you remember that race, Christian Coleman got the win, um, and then Su Bing Tang actually finished in uh, second place. Actually, yeah, that was two thousand eighteen. Su Bing Tang finished in uh, second place in Birmingham. So. Ronnie Baker got that bronze medal. So we're going to see how things kind of pan out. But yeah, that's the men's 60 meter dash. Really, really excited to, to see how things pan out. Um, all right. So let's talk about this women's 60 meter dash. We're also going to be a very, very exciting race for the most part. But I think in my opinion, two women are the clear standouts and they're the clear favorites um, when we're talking about this year. Aaliyah Hobbs. Um, so Aaliyah Hobbs, as well as Makai Briscoe. I think Aaliyah Hobbs is going to take the win, and then Makai Briscoe is going to come second. Now, one important thing to note is that Aaliyah Hobbs was supposed to run at the New Balance Indoor Grand Prix. She pulled out of that race and didn't run, but she already did start her season off very, very well. Just going to pull up her profile very quickly, but she did start the season off very well. She's run um, 7.05 seconds um, at the Razorback Invitational down in Arkansas. She also ran 7.11, so she's been super consistent. We know last year she also broke the American record in the 60 meters running 6.94. So if she's in form, if she's healthy and if she shows up, then I think Aaliyah Hobbs is going to be the clear favorite to get the win here. Then just behind her, um, I'm looking at Makai Briscoe. Don't forget, Makai Briscoe is the 2022 World Indoor Silver Medalist. She has a personal best of 6.99 seconds. So um, she she is not one to be slept on. She's not one to be slept on. And by far behind Aaliyah Hobbs, Makai Briscoe is, in my opinion, the class of the field. Aaliyah Hobbs, Makai Briscoe, and then I'm looking at Solera Barnes. Solera Barnes has been uh, running pretty well. She got second place at the New Balance Indoor Grand Prix. Um, not too far off her personal best, uh, running 7.15. Her personal best is 7.13. So we're going to uh, see what Solera uh, Barnes does. Tamara Clark, she ran the 60 meters at Milrose, also keeping an eye on her as well. Um, so yeah, we're going to see how this kind of plays out. But I think for the most part, this should be pretty pretty clear. Leah Hobbs, Makai Briscoe, then behind them, Solera Barnes, Tamara Clark, Carol Parker. Carol Parker has kind of been a sleeper in the USA uh, sprinting scene for a little bit. So really looking forward to seeing what... Um, um, what you can do. So yeah, in terms of time, I'm probably, I'm probably looking at maybe seven, at least seven, close to seven flat, maybe six, nine, nine. Again, D TBD on if Aaliyah Hobbs is in form, if she's, um, you know, if she's healthy and if she shows up, but I think we can really see something like a seven, seven flat, right? Um, oh, and yeah, look, look at that, right? Aaliyah Hobbs running a world lead at altitude, which means uh, sub seven zero could be right. We just saw um, Julian Alfred run the world lead at 699. So, you know, we'll see how that kind of pans out. But I think we could see at least seven flat around there, if not 70 something uh, for sure. So women's 60 meter dash, super, super excited to see how things kind of pan out uh, with that there. Um, and yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure why Aaliyah Hobbs uh, pulled out. Not exactly sure. But again, we'll see if she shows up, you know, this weekend in Albuquerque. Um, yeah. So, and yeah, shout out to all you who are jumping into the chat. Appreciate y'all just doing a quick kind of preview of the USA Indoor Championships and what's going down this weekend in Albuquerque. So we spoke about the men's 60. We spoke about the women's 60. Oh, let me make sure I can get my banners up because we got to talk about the women's 60 meter hurdles. Now, 
Women's 60 meter hurdles, this is arguably the most competitive event in the world right now. And the USA women are no different. This is a pretty stacked field. It's a little bit, a little bit light in terms of some of the competition, right? We don't obviously Toby Amisan, obviously Devin Charlton, um, you know, th those two have been dominating. Nia Ali is not running, but we still do have a very strong field. And in my opinion, I think the clear, let me not say clear because it's completely wide open, but looking at Tia Jones. Tia Jones, just in Boston, she ran 7.72 seconds, which moved her to number five. Well, it was number five all time. Let me pull up the all time list. Previously was number five all time. Then when Devin Charlton broke the world record, that moved her to number six all time, if I'm correct. Just going to pull up the 60 meter hurdles very quickly. But um, Tia Jones, I mean, she is, oh yeah, and this is the United States. So yeah, Tia Jones, she's run 7.72, 7.79 at the Armory in New York City, just behind Devin Charlton, as well as Daniel Williams. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what Tia Jones uh, is able to do. Let me just bring up the world real quick to see where Tia Jones currently sits. Um, oh, this is 2024. Um, yeah, Tia Jones, I, I think she's a clear kind of favorite for the 60 meter hurdles here. And I'm excited to see what she kind of pulls out. Again, this is at altitude. Um, yeah, Tia Jones, number six all time in a 60 meter hurdle. So excited to see what Tia Jones does. Like, I, I love seeing athletes who are extremely, extremely young, um, who are rising, who are really making an impact. Tia Jones is one of the few athletes who went straight out of high school, went pro and is really excelling. So we're going to see how they, how she kind of plans out, pans out, um, when talking about the 60 meter hurdles. And then, yeah, I think, um, Oops, let me see here. I think I probably agree that it's Tia Jones and Masai Russell. I'm I'm very much on that realm. Tia Jones, 7.72 this season. Masai Russell, 7.7, uh, 7.84 this season. And Masai Russell seems confident. Don't forget, Masai Russell trains with Devin Charlton. So she is she's seeing like Devin Charlton breaking a world record. They're in training every day, you know, out there in Kentucky. So I think Masai Russell is definitely going to make the team here. But Two women that I don't want to sleep on. Number one, Alicia Johnson. Now, Alicia Johnson hasn't been having as great of a season relative to 2023. Indoors, she was dominating. Alicia Johnson was dominating in 2023 last year, indoors. She was cooking. She hasn't, again, she hasn't been having as great of a season, but she is not one to be slept on. Additionally, Christina Clemens. I'm very much looking to see what Christina Clemens is able to pull out. Again, she's just coming back on... Um, coming back from uh, giving birth to a, to a child last year. So she took the, the past couple of years off, but she opened up her season with 7.89 seconds, which is her fastest season opener ever. Additionally, Christina Clemens has run 7.73, which is one of the fastest times in history, number seven, number six, seven all time indoors. And Christina Clemens is a 2018 world indoor silver medalist. Christina Clemens has credentials when we're talking about the 60 meter hurdles. Now, again, not sure. I, I'm, I'm not ready to just pick her for the team right now. I'm picking Tia Jones and Masai Russell, but don't sleep on Christina Clemens. Don't sleep on Alicia Johnson and some of the other women. Don't sleep them uh, on them as well. Amber Hughes, she's also been, uh, you know, hitting some some good times this year as well. Sharika Nelvis, she's been one of the veterans and she's still out there competing. Um, Sharika Nelvis, I think, is number five all time, 7.70 seconds indoors. So really looking forward to seeing the women's 60 meter hurdles. But again, Tia Jones. Uh, Masai Russell, those are my top two who I'm picking for the team. Again, remember, World Indoor Championships, only two people go to the World Indoor Championships from USA. So looking to, looking to see how things kind of um, pan out. Yeah, uh, Melanie, so Masai has had a slow start this year. One thing to think about is that, again, she's not in the NCAA. So even though she's had a, a quote-unquote slow start, she's now a professional athlete. So she's not running as many races. Apologize about the background noise. She's not running as many races. Her goal, of course, is the Olympic Games. So, yes, she's running USA. She's hopefully going to go to the World Indoor Championships. But the ultimate goal is the world is the Olympic Games outdoors. So I'm not too concerned when I see like Masai Russell or Julian Alfred or, you know, some of the or even Talitha Diggs. Right. Some of these athletes who are in the NCAA last year, they're going to be starting off much slower than they were last year. So um, I kind of give some um, some uh, some credence to them there. Um, so good point. And um, yeah. I thought Masai wasn't running. Yeah, Masai is running. So I got a chance to speak with her at the New Balance Indoor Grand Prix. And I asked both her and Devin Charlton, and both of them are running World Indoor Championships. So they're, they're yeah, they're going for it. They're going for it. But they are kind of like, it's not like they're absolutely peaking in a sense, uh, from my understanding. They're just kind of 
but the focus is the Olympic Games, right? That's the focus this year. So we're going to see um, how that goes out. And yes, I completely agree. I think this world record is very much in danger. One thing to note is that um, at the Milrose Games, you know, after Devin Charlton broke that world record, just speaking with her, she literally said that after Toby Amason broke the world outdoor record, that motivated everyone else to show that, yo, this is like really possible. Because even though um, back in 2016, Kenny Harrison initially broke the 100 meter hurdle world record, right? But if you remember at those 2022 World Indoor Championships, I'm sorry, the World Outdoor Championships in Eugene, when Toby broke the world record in the semifinals, all the women in that race ran extremely fast. So this was really like a ripple effect that is translating out through the rest of the field as we simply move forward. So all these women are motivated. And honestly, we could see this world record go down. Um, let me just double check the... Um, the world record again, because what, six point, um, 7.67 seconds. I mean, in reality, we can see something like, um, yeah, they got to, they got to update this, but seven, let me actually just go to the, um, the all time list, but we can see something like 7.65 or something like that. I mean, would, I, I wouldn't be too surprised at 7.65, um, or in that range when we're talking about the 60 meter hurdles. Um, again, a lot of the women between Devin Charlton, world record 7.67. Um, and then you have, you know, Tia Jones, 7.72 right in there. So um, a lot of these women, Christina Manning, who is now Christina Clemens, again, she's one of the fastest all time. So we can see something very, very deep. Masai Russell has run 7.75 seconds. So don't sleep on Masai Russell putting something out very, very fast this year. Um, Dreaming, 7.63. We could see it. I, I don't doubt it. Right. I don't doubt it. I really, really, you know, think that it's very possible. So we're going to see how things pan out. Mm. Yeah, so I, I completely agree. The world record is not safe at altitude. But, yeah, huge shout out to all these women. Never sleep on uh, Lele, right? Alicia Johnson is, you know, she's always in the mix. She could very, very well make the team. Um, oh, this is interesting. Okay, Melanie, I don't think Masai is going to make the team. I don't know why I see someone else getting her at the line. Ooh, that's a that's a semi hot take because again, if you're talking about just this year in the 60 meter hurdles, I mean, uh, let me just pull up again. If we're talking about just this year in the 60 meter hurdles, I mean, there's no other woman in the United States who's better than you know uh, Tia Jones and Masai Russell right now. So it's hard. It's hard for me to say. It's hard for me to say. But we gonna see. We gonna see. Yeah, we gonna see. Um, but again, I got Tia Jones, I got Masai Russell. Those are my two picks for the for the team to uh, World Indoor Championships. So that is women's 60 meter hurdles. Let's go ahead and talk about the men's 60 meter hurdles as it's going to be another good race. I think I'm pretty sure we can all agree that Grant Holloway, he is the favorite. He is the very clear favorite. He's run. I don't even know why they don't have season's best for Grant Holloway, but Grant Holloway, he's run uh Seven point, um, yeah, he's run 7.32 seconds this year already. Grant Holloway has what the top, I forget how many, the top five or or four times in the world this year. Um, and in the USA, yeah, he has a top four times in the USA this year 732, 735, 737, 739. I mean, it's it's Grant Holloway show. He's undefeated for a decade in so indoors in the 60 meter hurdles. He's a defending world indoor champion. Grant Holloway is a man. I mean, he's he's the guy. It's it'd be hard. You'd have to be, you know, assuming he's going to hit a hurdle or something like that to to pick against him in this race. So yeah, Grant Holloway. This could be. I th I think Grant Holloway is on world record watch in this case. I do think that Grant Holloway is on world record watch. The world record is seven point three. Let me pull up the men. Seven point two nine seconds, right? Um, and obviously Grant Holloway owns that world record. So yeah, 7.29. If he's already running 7.32 seconds, let me pull up what he did in uh, in 2020. Yeah, let's pull up what Grant Holloway did in 2021 when he ran that world indoor record when we're talking about the rest of his season. So if we're talking about the progression of his season, he's probably semi on pace to do the same thing, right? He started off 7.38. This is 2021 uh, when he broke the world indoor record. 7.38. 7.35, 7.38, and then he got to 7.32, right? So he's probably on pace about uh, the same range as he was in 2021. I think in 2022, he actually tied the world indoor record. Yeah, he tied it 
um, at in Belgrade at the World Inter Championships in the semifinals. And if you're looking at this 2022 season, when he again ran that World Indoor record, he was actually a little bit slower than he is now. So Grant Holloway is, in my opinion, very much on world record pace. And additionally, um, let me pull up. Actually, this is a good point because if we pull up his um, his 2020, yeah, this is at altitude. In 2022, I don't know. Someone could fact check me, but I don't know if Spokane, Washington is at altitude. I don't think it's at altitude. So this would be one of the first times that Grant Holloway is running USA indoors at altitude. So this could be this could be a problem. Grant Holloway could be on serious world record watch tomorrow. I mean, tomorrow is the is a 60 meter hurdle heats and finals. So we're gonna see. We're gonna see. Grant Holloway might be a problem tomorrow. So that is that's a that's a good call out here. So we're gonna see if world record is going down for Grant Holloway. Um, okay, so Spokane is not altitude. Yeah, 500. Yeah, so it's not altitude there. Good, good, good. So, um, all right. So yeah, Grant Holloway. I mean, I think he's the the favorite, clear favorite here. This second place was kind of tough for me. We have um, Trey Cunningham, and we also have Daniel Roberts. This one was kind of tough for me to pick out who was the guy. Now, who was going to get second place? Um, and just to clarify, AJT, so only th only two people are picked to go to the World Indoor Championships. Only two people can make the team. I I don't – you could be right, though, that um, – yeah, uh, Elias, you could be right that he has a wild card because of the World Indoor Tour. I, someone could fact check me and maybe uh, I'll look it up. What they used to do is that the World Indoor Tour winner – from the previous year would go on to become the world indoor champion or get a buy to the world indoor championships. Um, so it's actually very likely because he did win the world indoor tour last year, but I'm not exactly sure. One of the things is that in 2020, that kind of messed up the world indoor tour situation where they were supposed to have the world indoor tour and then the world indoor championships, but then, you know, the pandemic happened, but someone could fact check me. Grant Alway might have a wild card. If that's the case, then Trey Cunningham and Daniel Roberts are going to be the top two along with Grant Holloway to make the team. So we'll see how that pans out. But if I had to split hairs between Trey Cunningham and Daniel Roberts, I'd probably pick Trey Cunningham only simply on the times, right? Trey Cunningham has run 7.44, 7.49. And I think he's run 7.47 at a race that wasn't on the, the world uh, athletics calendar. So it, it doesn't count here, but he does have those seven fours. The reason that I'm I'm looking at Daniel Roberts as potentially, you know, um, challenging uh, Trey Cunningham is because Daniel Roberts actually just recently beat Trey Cunningham at the Milrose Games. Now, to be fair, Trey Cunningham beat Daniel Roberts at the New Balance Indoor Grand Prix in Boston. So it's, you know, it's kind of um, which way, it, whatever it is. But if I had to pick, you know, top two, I'd say Grant Holloway, Trey Cunningham. But uh, assuming Grant Holloway has the wild card, then Grant Holloway, Trey Cunningham, Daniel Roberts, those are my top three. Um, to go to the World Indoor Championships. That'd be super dope if all three of them can go. Um, yeah, that'd be super dope. Now, um, I think, sorry, I think Melissa, Melanie had said it earlier. Uh, let me see. Yeah, there we go. So the guy from Walmart, <laughs> from Howard, he shocked everyone in the 60 meter hurdles. Yep, at the Milrose Games. Um, what's his name? Dylan or something. <laughs> yep. So Dylan Beard, Dylan Beard, again, shocked everyone at the Milrose Games running 7.44 seconds to win the race over Trey Cunningham, over Daniel Roberts, over Cordell Tench, right? So that was a big, big race for him. And one thing that I was looking at is that 6-4-4 uh, four, four was not really a fluke in the sense that he's been running pretty well all season, all indoor season. He ran, his top times all come from this year, 7.57, 7.56, 7.54, 7.44. Four. So it really is the case that once he got right, these were all kind of in the quote unquote college races in a sense, but once he got into a professional race, that's when he really showed out. So listen, he could very well make this team. Dylan Beard is not one to be slept on. He is very much in contention in, in the conversation to make this team. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing if he's able to pull things out. I'm really excited to see if he's able to pull things out. But um, again, Grant Holloway, world record watch for Grant Holloway. Um, and then Trey Cunningham and Daniel Roberts, I think they're going to make the team. And then I'd probably say Dylan Beard would be the next up, that sleeper pick to potentially make that team, just like he kind of, you know, swept, uh, swept the field. So um, in the armory. So we're going to see how things pan out with the men's 60 meter hurdles. Um, all right. So, oh, yeah. And shout out to Dylan Beard, right? So kind of hoping Dylan Beard can make the team and improve his brand, especially since I doubt he can make the Olympic team. 
Yeah, that's a good point where it'd be, it'd be cool to see him make a world indoor championship team, right? Even if it's just making the team, being able to compete internationally to be able to, yeah, like he said, improve his brand to get the chance to, um, you know, compete amongst professionals on the world stage, potentially put himself in the conversation for a contract, right? It's, it's, oh man, I, I can go in, but like, it sucks when I hear that athletes are literally working, you know, regular jobs and they're not able to afford, you know, the opportunity to compete consistently, right? At these professional races, the ability to get the proper funding for training, for, you know, um, coaching, for weightlifting, for nutrition, for, you know, um, massage therapist and all those details, right? I'll never forget at the 2014 World Indoor Championships, Chanel Price won the 800 meter, um, won the 800 meters, the gold medals at the gold medal at the World Indoor Championships. And just a couple months before, or I think at the time, she was working at a shoe store. She didn't have a contract at the time. So it, it sucks to see that, you know, so many athletes are in the sport are not able to be, to have contracts, but they're still quote unquote professional athletes. But it is what it is. Huge shout outs to Dylan Beard. Um, and hopefully we're, we see some good things from him, you know, as we go throughout the season. Um, all right. So let's move on as we're going to finish up real quick. Let's talk about this men's 400 meter dash. Now, I was looking at the start list here and it's actually kind of quote unquote deep. Let me not say it's like super, super deep, right? We're not seeing like Michael Norman. We're not seeing like, you know, some of these other guys, right? But um, it's, it's pretty deep. It's pretty deep. In my opinion, this is Matthew Bowling's race to lose. I mean, Matthew Bowling... Okay, now let me give a caveat. It's hard to tell because a lot of these guys have not run indoors this season yet, right? Um, Ryan Willie, um, Trevor Bassett, right? Trevor Bassett, World Indoor Silver Medalist from from 2022. Bryce Deadman. So Elijah got or Elijah Godwin actually ran a race, but I think it wasn't on the World Athletics uh, calendar. But in my opinion, Matthew Bowling, this is his race to lose. He's run 45.47 seconds. I think he's also run, Matthew Bowling has also run a 30, what he run? 30, 32.84. So decent. I mean, nothing too crazy in terms of 300 meter dash. Um, but yeah, shout out to you all, man. Shout out to you, um, TSE um, exclusive. Shout out to you, bro. Um, but yeah, Matthew Bowling, I think he's, this is his race to lose. Like it, I like, I like this race. It's, it's a pretty deep race. Matthew Bowling, Elijah Godwin, Ja'Cory Patterson, Chris Bailey, Will London, right? Trevor Bassett, Bryce Deadman, uh, Ryan Willie, Champion Allison. Shout out to check out the video that I just did on uh, Champion Allison um, and his return. This is a pretty, again, relatively deep 400 meter, you know, race if we're talking about an indoor, you know, world championship team to make. So I'm looking at um, Matthew Bowling as the, the favorite here, 45.47. I think Matthew Bowling has the potential to go sub 45 seconds indoors. I think he can run 44 seconds. Um, again, if you um, if you remember Matthew Bowling, of course he went pro. Um, you know he left Georgia last year, and then of course he's now training with Allian Francique. Um, I think they train at the University of South Carolina. Um, so excited to see what Bowling is able to do. I'm super excited that Bowling is focusing on the 400 meter dash. Of course, he was focusing on the sprints while he was at Georgia. He dipped his toes in the long jump once. Would have loved to see him there, but he's finding his footing in the 400 and listen, loving indoors here. So shout out to Matthew Bowling. That's my pick for the win here at USA's. And then I'm probably looking at Trevor Bassett for to also make the team. Now, this is going to be kind of tough, right? Again, Trevor Bassett hasn't run indoors this year yet. But one thing that I like about Trevor Bassett is that he's um, last year, he did very well in the 400 meter hurdles kind of at the end of the season. Remember he made that final, that semifinal of death at the world indoor, uh, the world championships in Budapest um, in the 400 meter hurdles. And then eventually went on to compete in the, in the finals and then had the rest of the season. He ran his personal best of 47.38 in the semifinals in those 400 meter hurdles. And then you know, obviously he finished sixth in the final, didn't run as fast, but I, I like Trevor Bassett. Again, Trevor Bassett, he's a world indoor silver medalist from 2022. He just got edged out by Dream Richards um, at the World Indoor Championships, 45.05 seconds. I like Trevor Bassett for to make the team, but I don't want to sleep on someone like Chris Bailey. He's run 45.75, and previously while he was at um, – Arkansas, competing for Arkansas, he ran 45.09. So he's a sleeper here. Um, Champion Allison, he's making his way back. Ryan Willie, don't sleep on Ryan Willie. Ryan Willie uh, coming out of the University of Florida. Uh, he has a good shot. Bryce Dedman, always love to see Bryce Dedman. Bryce Dedman and Champion Allison actually train together. So 
yeah, there's a lot of guys in this field. There's a lot of guys in this field, and I'm excited to see how this kind of plays out. But um, again, Matthew Bowling, Trevor Bassett, those are my top two picks for the men's 400 meter dash. Um, yeah, ab absolutely. I'm so happy that uh, Elijah Godwin is you know back in. He's healthy. You know, after that, don't forget Elijah Godwin had that you know kind of really really scary javelin injury many many years ago, and he got back into form. So we're going to see how Elijah Godwin play uh, pans out. I think I will say though. I know it's not listed here, but he did open up his season. I think he ran like 49 seconds. That was at some, somewhere in Florida at that indoor race. But so I don't, I don't know what exactly that means, but we're going to see Elijah Godwin. Shout out to Elijah Godwin. Uh, 45.3 is the fastest I see him running regarding Matthew Bowling. Maybe, maybe. I, I, I don't know. I, I just like Matthew Bowling's potential. Um, I, I like his potential though. And I like, I feel like his mindset is really shifted knowing that, okay, I'm a 400 meter runner. I'm going for the 400. And I think this is a stepping stone. Matthew Bowling really has to put a foot on the ground and say, I want to be one of the best 400 meter runners in the country. And I want to make the Olympic team. The Olympic team this year is not going to be easy, right? It's not going to be easy when we're going to the world championships. You have got, or I'm sorry, when we're going to the Olympics, um, Michael Norman is focusing on the 400 meters again. Quincy Hall is the bronze medalist from last year. Vernon Norwood, right? He finished fourth place uh, at the world championships last year. Um, and he ran, you know, super fast at, well, not super, super fast, but he ran very well at New Balance Indoor Grand Prix. He's in form. He's not running here, but there are a lot of guys that really, really are in the mix when we're talking about the 400. Matthew Bowling needs to plant his foot on the ground and be like, yo, I want to be in this mix. I want to be in this mix. And I think a race like this could really prove it. And again, we're at altitude. I, I think 45, 45, Close to 45 flat, but I would not be surprised if he ran 44 seconds, like 45.9 or something like that. Um, yeah, surprised that Matthew is not sponsored. Yeah, it's interesting. He Maybe he's in talks. Maybe he'll announce a sponsor going in maybe outdoors. That's a good point. I don't know. Maybe if he – I'm not even sure. It's a good point. Um, but, yeah, Brave, good point. So Bowling is running against more seasoned 400-meter runners. I doubt this is his race to lose. Yeah, maybe, could be. I, I may be, I'm maybe jumping the gun. I think my only issue was that Bowling has run this season semi-consistently, and he's run relatively well, 45-4-7, while some of the other guys have not run yet. Or if they have run, they just haven't run as fast. Shout-out to Brian Frost, 45.83 this season. And huge shout-out to – um. oh, let me make sure I can see it. But huge shout-out to Paul De uh, Derewo. He's actually from New York City like I am. He competed, I think he's from the Bronx, competed at, um, what was it, Bronx? Could be from Bronx or Clinton High School. I think he's from Clinton High School, but shout out to him. Um, he's He's been, I forget what season, but Paul Dedewo uh, De is one of the best, four, used to be one of the best 400 meter runners. But yeah, this is a stacked field. I'll be fair. This is a stacked field. Let me not say it's um, <laughs> Matthew Bowling's to lose. Um, but yeah. Yeah, good point. There's a four by four. How many people will make the team from USA? Yeah, so essentially two two men will make the 400 meter individual team, and then for the four by four, of course, they bring you know four guys. So um, we'll see four guys uh, running at the World Indoor Championships on the four by four. Um, AJT Bowling is smart to focus on the 400. I think as long as he's healthy, he can pick up one or two relay medals at least, which is better than not even being on the team. Absolutely right. We saw what he did. This is why. I, I, what's crazy is I haven't even done many videos or any videos on Matthew Bowling, but I should have done a video on like why Matthew Bowling is extremely smart to dip his toes into the 400. If you're running the 400, all you have to do is make the relay team and you become a world champion. You become an Olympic you know, champion, right? Matthew Bowling got medals at the, uh, at the Budapest World Championships last year. If you were entering prior or, you know, after you uh, NCAAs, no one would have expected Matthew Bowling to make a world championship team considering he was focusing on those sprints. The 100 and the 200 were super stacked, but switched over to that 400, ran it at uh, New Balance Indoor Grand Prix. I'm sorry, New Balance. Um, sorry, the and New York City Grand Prix outdoors. And then he went and he went on, got a gold medal, got a world record, right? He's a world record holder. Like Matthew Bowling might be one of the smartest athletes that we've seen over the past couple of years. But yeah, shout out to Matthew Bowling. We're going to see how things pan out. Um, yeah, the problem with Matthew Bowling to me is that he always seems to be all out. He doesn't run relaxed to me yet. And I think this goes to the point and we, we talk about Matthew Bowling a lot, but I think that goes to the point of why moving to the 400 was smart running the hundred and the 200. Like we all saw what he was running. Like he was running all out. Like he was really, really pushing it. And he looked almost un uncomfortable sometimes, but 
moving to the 400 almost forced him to be like, okay, I have to pace my race. I have to have some sort of strategy. I literally can't run an all out 400 meters or else I'm going to die. Right. So I, I like, uh, I like, uh, where Matthew Bowling is at right now. So all that Matthew Bowling talk, we're going to come back and we're going to see how things pan out, uh, tomorrow in the 400. Let's talk about the women's 400 meter dash though. Um, here I'm really looking at two women in this race. We have, and let me not say that. I, I hate to say like, I'm looking at only these people when all these women are definitely very much in contention to be able to make this team. But I'm very, very much um, having Talitha Diggs on my radar and then also Alexis Holmes. Alexis Holmes just came off running 50.80 seconds in the 400, very close to her personal best of 50.77. And if you remember, yes, that four by four side, the, the issue that she had um, in that the four by four with the exchange with Conair Hayes, Alexis Holmes, you know, she kind of ran down Femke Bull on that mixed four by four, right? Let's not forget what happened in Budapest. Yes, Femke Bull fell, but Alexis Holmes was already on pace to win that race. So shout out to Alexis Holmes, uh, along her and then also Talitha Diggs. I think those two are probably the slight favorites. Talitha Diggs just came off running 36 seconds in the 300 at the Milrose Games. Um, that was her season opener. And uh, Melanie, this kind of goes to the point earlier. We were talking about Masai Russell. Talitha Diggs maybe starting, quote unquote, a little bit slower, but she's not in the NCAA anymore, right? She's, you know, starting things a little bit more measured. The goal is outdoors. And I got a chance to speak with her and also, you know, her family, her coach. And, you know, they said that, yo, if she makes a team, great. If not, no worries. Goal is Olympic, uh, the Olympic Games. And let's not forget, Talitha Diggs is the only American woman to make the world championship final last year. Now, she didn't get a medal, right? She didn't get on the podium or anything like that, but she made the world championship final uh, at Budapest last year. So Talitha Diggs, for the most part, has been arguably the most consistent 400 meter runner that we've seen, aside from, of course, Cindy McLaughlin Roney or Britton Wilson, right? They've been dipping their toes in the hurdles and the 400, but Talitha Diggs is always in that mix. So we're going to see how Talitha Diggs does, but I think Talitha Diggs, as well as Alexis Holmes, are the top two to look for. Um, and then, oops, let me switch this over, my bad. Women's 400 meter dash. But And then I'm probably looking at um, Quinera Hayes as a sleeper. She hasn't opened up her season, but, um, you know, we're going to see how things kind of pan out um, with uh, with Quinera Hayes. I'm really excited to see how th those pan out. But Talitha Diggs, Alexis Holmes, those are my top two picks for the to make the team to the US, uh, to the World Championships. Um Anyone know about Britton Wilson? Is she doing? Is she cleared? I think she's healthy. She's training. Uh, remember, she had those kind of um, the, I think it was like shins. I, I forget exactly what the injury was, but I think she's good. She's training and she's um, she's back healthy. So I'm excited to see. I don't know what she's going to run this year in terms of either the 400 or the 400 meter hurdles, but excited to see how you know she kind of uh, pans out. She's very much a metal threat in both events, right? So we're going to see that. But yeah. Women's 400. Now let's finish off with just some of these jumps very quickly. Um, these fields are not too, uh, well, no, actually, let me not, let me not say that the women's long jump is actually a pretty good, pretty good field. There's actually a pretty good field when we're talking about the women's long jump. Um, but I think by far Tara Davis Woodhall is by far the favorite 6.86 meters. It was the world lead for a little bit. I think the world lead just got taken back by, is it SA? Brume, it's either Ese Brume or um, Ruth Usoro took the world lead in the long jump. Oh, no, this is all time. Sorry about that. Um, but, yeah, I know, um, yeah, regardless, Tara Davis-Woodhall, I think she's a clear favorite when we're talking about the um, women's long jumps. Um, and then behind Tara Davis-Woodhall, I'm looking at Monet Nichols. Monet Nichols, uh, she's jumped 6.74 meters this year. She's a number two American. Let me pull up the women's long jump this year. She's number two American in the long jump right now. And Monet Nichols, she competed for Texas Tech and she was one of the, you know, best, you know, long jumpers for a while. Um, at least four years. She never made a team yet, but Monet Nichols is not someone to sleep on. Um, so we're going to see how that kind of pans out. Quanisha Burks is not competing. I would have probably picked her to make the team, but Quanisha Burks is going to be skipping out this year. Um, but yeah, Tar Davis Woodhall, Monet Nichols, that's probably going to be my top two picks. And then some sleepers, look at Jasmine Moore. Jasmine Moore is in that field. It's kind of weird to call her a sleeper as she's one of the most consistent jumpers in the United States. Um, but, you know, looking to see what Jasmine Moore does. Also, Tiffany Flynn. Tiffany Flynn has made the world championship team. She made the 2022 world championship team. And 
I'm going to cross check, but Tiffany Flynn finished fourth place at the world indoor championships back in 2022. Um, if I'm correct. So she's, she's someone who's a gamer. Tiffany Flynn is a gamer. Let me, yeah. World indoor championships in 2022, Tiffany Flynn finished fourth place at those world indoor championships. So don't sleep on Tiffany Flynn. She also made the world championships in Eugene in 2022. So I like an athlete like Tiffany Flynn, who's been relatively consistent, right? I want to see consistency. That's what I really look for in athletes when I'm trying to make picks or when I'm trying to make predictions and all kinds of things like that. So shout out to Tiffany Flynn. Um, but I think Tara Davis Woodhall, as well as Monet Nichols, those are going to be my top two picks um, to make the world indoor championship team. But sleepers, Jasmine Moore, Tiffany Flynn. Um, and then also shout out to Jasmine Todd. Jasmine Todd, uh, she hosts a podcast called Out of the Blocks. Always um, doing amazing work. Um, and yeah, Jasmine Todd, shout out to, huge shout out to Jasmine Todd. Um, all right, now let's quickly go over to the men's long jump. I think that's happening on Saturday. Yeah, men's long jump. This one isn't as deep, but Javon Harrison, looking at Javon Harrison in this men's long jump, he's probably going to be the favorite here. He's jumped uh, 7.87, but I think um, Javon Harrison, in my opinion, will probably be the favorite. He's he's high jumped a little bit better this year, but we're going to see. And then also someone like Will Williams. Don't sleep on Will Williams. I don't know why these season bests don't come up. Will Williams has jumped a couple times this year already. So shout out to Will Williams. It's it's kind of hard for me to pick, but even Cordell Tinch. Cordell Tinch, we're going to see. I guess, I mean, the hurdles is on Friday, and then the long jump is on Saturday. So Cordell Tinch still dipping in his toes in the doubles. I don't know. We're, we're going to see. But um, looking to see Cordell Tinch. Um, but I think Javon, I'm probably going to edge towards Cordell, I'm um, sorry, to Javon Harrison and Will Williams as my top two picks to make the world championship team indoors. And then I might look at someone like Jerrion Lawson to, as a sleeper pick. Jerrion Lawson, um, he's been competing indoors this season already. And yeah, he's been pretty consistent relatively, but I, I like the experience that Jerrion Lawson has. Fourth place at the 2016 Olympic Games. Um, of course, he got the Bowman back in, I think it was 2016 when he won the 100, 200, and long jump in the NCAA. So we're going to see. But a lot of guys, Jefferson, 8.04 meters. Isaac Grimes, 8.01 meters. There's a couple guys who have jumped eight meters. But again, I'm looking for that consistency and that ability to, you know, really, um, you know, prove yourself over, over some time. And someone like Will Williams, he's made multiple world championship teams. Javon Harrison, multiple world championship teams. Um, so those are, those are probably my top two picks. Shout out to Ravon Gray as well. Ravon Gray coming out of LSU a couple years back. He's been, um, one to always look out for, but yeah, shout out to the men's long jump here and Cameron Crump, man. How did I forget about Cameron Crump? Cameron Crump was what well, I'm, I'm forgetting. Was it, uh, someone can correct me in the, in the chat, but was it Mississippi state? I think he competed for, um, I could be wrong. It could be Tennessee. I apologize, Cameron Crump, but he was one of the best uh, jumpers and is one of the best jumpers um, for some time. So huge shout outs to Cameron Crump, but all these guys in the men's long jump. Um, yeah, Jasmine Moore could make the team. I, I think she could make the team. She probably could make the team. Yeah, Jasmine Moore is, you know, arguably one of the best jumpers uh, along with uh, Tara Davis, but I'm looking at um, Tara Davis Woodhall and Monet Nichols for my team. Jasmine Moore as a little bit of sleeper. Um, I think Jasmine Moore is going to make the triple jump team, but we don't see. Um, all right. So quickly, just to finish off with the jumps, women's triple jump. This is where I see Jasmine Moore being the clear. No, let me not say clear favorite. I don't want to say clear, clear, but Jasmine Moore, 14.34 meters this year already. She has the American record indoors at 15.12. Um, I'm picking Jasmine Moore for the team and then Couture Orgy as well. Couture Orgy has made pretty much every single you know, team that she's attempted. So huge shout out to both of them. Also don't sleep on someone like Ariana Fisher. Um, she's jumped 14 meters before. Um, so I, you know, I really like Ariana Fisher and some of the other women who are in the mix, but Jasmine Moore, Couture Orgy, I think those are the top two for the women's triple jump. Really excited to see how those things kind of play out. Um, all right. I think that was Pretty much the what I had. I know I did. I did have some on the long, on the high jump. I, the high jumps aren't as deep. I'm gonna just pull up the women's high jump. Vashti Cunningham. I mean, she's the by far the clear favorite in this case. Vashti Cunningham is you know, very much a clear and away favorite, and I think she'll you know of course get the team here. I actually don't know if anyone else has a standard, which is a good point, but we're gonna see how that pans out. And then on the men's side, I mean, I think we're looking at Shelby um, McEwen. He has a he has an equal world lead, or I, I think someone actually might have surpassed the world lead. But yeah, and again, not sure why these seasons bests don't come up. But I know I spoke to Shelby at the um, I think it was a Dr. Sander invite earlier this year. So 
we're going to see how things pan out. But yeah, that's the quick predictions. Again, sprints, jumps, and hurdles going for the USA Championships. Excited to see how things kind of pan out. Um, but yeah, just to kind of, yeah, close things out. I mean, I think I'm looking at, I'm excited to see the men's 60 meter dash, Christian Coleman versus Noah Lyles. I think Christian Coleman is going to take the win in the 60 meter dash. I think Noah Lyles is going to get second. Christian Coleman is a consummate performer when we're talking about the 60 meter dash. World indoor record holder, 6.34 seconds, has a next best two times, 6.37 and 6.37, despite him running 6.51 at the Milrose Games and getting the win there. And Noah Lyles having the world lead at 6.44. I think that Christian Coleman is going to take the win. In their head-to-heads, they've raced five or six times in their career, and Christian Coleman has won every single one. But don't don't sleep on Noah Lyles, right? He could come out and surprise, run 6.41, run 6.39. I don't know. We're at altitude, though, so um, we can see some very fast times. Additionally, keep a lookout for the men's and the women's 60-meter hurdles. Both of those are very much on world record watch. Tia Jones has run 7.72 seconds. She currently is number uh, number six all-time indoors in the 60-meter hurdles. She can very likely get down to 6 point, um, I'm sorry, 7.65 or 7.66, you know, just surpassing the world record that Devin Charlton beat out last uh, just this past weekend. But also Masai Russell, also in the conversation, Masai Russell has run 7.75 seconds um, indoors last year. She could, you know, surprise everyone and go crazy. Also, Grant Holloway, I think Grant Holloway has the highest likelihood of breaking the world indoor record. He, The world indoor record, he has it at 7.29 seconds from back in 2021 and 2022. But if we compare this season to the 2022 season, Grant Holloway is very much ahead of pace. And someone could fact check me, but this is the first time that Grant Holloway is going to be running USA's at world indoor champion at um at altitude at Albuquerque. So we're going to see how Grand Holloway actually pans out um, and it's happening tomorrow. So we're going to see, but um, any last couple comments I'm um, about to head out. I just wanted to address this quick comment. Would you like to see a thing Mo in the 400? Absolutely. I'd love to see her in the 400. Listen, a thing Mo, she split 40. I can actually bring this up very quickly. A thing Mo split 48.3 seconds on the four by four at the Olympic games in, in Tokyo. Um, let me pull this up very quickly. Yes, a thing Mo at the Olympic Games in Tokyo 2021, a thing Mo split 48.32 seconds. I would love to see a thing Mo run the 400. She's run super fast consistently already, but we know she's an 800 meter runner. I'd love to see her stick with that, but I'd love to see her be an 800 400 runner as opposed to 815. My personal preference, right? Of course, I focus on the, I love the sprints. Um, but the thing is, a thing Mo is a once in a generation. Uh, talent, right? She has that range to be able to run everything from 400 all the way up to 1500 and the mile. So um, we're going to see, we're going to see. Um, oh, nice. Okay. Interesting. Tobogo is running the 300 on February 17th. Again, what's your take on it? Tobogo in the 300. And uh, let me know, is this, I'm assuming this is outdoors because this is, in, I'm assuming this is in Botswana, uh, similar to like he did last year. Um, world record, man. So Tobogo in the 300, uh, let me pull up the 300 here. So Tobogo in the 300, what did he run last year? 31.52 seconds. This was um, this was early, right? This is February 18th last year. Based on what Tobogo did last year, um, when we're talking about the rest of the season, right? The 200, the 100, the 200, he ran uh, 19.50 seconds. The 100, he ran um, 9.8 seconds. I think Tobogo can run, man, I think he could run like 30.9 something. Yeah. Oh, actual random. I, I agree with you. I think he can run 30.9. I don't think he's going to break the world record, even though like put this world record in context, right? Look, well, before Wade Van Niekerk broke the world record, remember that Usain Bolt went for that world record and he missed Michael Johnson's world record right? It's a challenging, it's challenging to go for 30. If you're, if Tobogo was to break the world record, you're saying that he's going to run 30.7 seconds, right? The world record is 30.8. Usain Bolt couldn't run 30.8. And this was what, 2010? So this is a couple months, essentially, after he was in the form of his life from the 2009 world championships, Usain Bolt couldn't break 300 meter world record. So 
I think Tobogo is going to run like 30.9. He's very much going to go for it. But now that I'm actually talking through and thinking about it, Tobogo ran, um, just keep this on the screen. Tobogo, when he ran his 31.552, um, remember that he was like, he was like, um, you know, doing the taunting. He was like celebrating. Now his momentum was still moving, right? I think people do overestimate how, you know, celebrations work where someone is celebrating and, you know, they don't lose all their momentum aside un unless it's like Usain Bolt in 2008 when he's like pumping his chest. But regardless, I think Tobogo probably could have run last year, like 31.4 or 31.3. So if I'm going based on right now, I think Tobogo is informed to maybe go for 30.9. And if it's in the same place, it's at altitude, so he's going to have that slight advantage. I think 30.9 is in the cards for Tobogo um, this weekend. That's Man, this is going to be crazy. Thanks for thanks for letting me know. This is going to be uh, crazy. This is going to be crazy. Um, and yeah, so Bolt ran 30.9 in poor conditions and also wasn't in the best shape. Uh, he could have broken it. Don't forget, Bolt only had one attempt. Wade and Johnson ran it multiple times. That's a that's a fair point. That's actually a really fair point. Yeah, Wade Van Niekerk he ran thirty one point zero three before he broke that. You know, uh, the broke it a year later. Um, and then yeah, the, I do remember in Ostrava in two thousand ten, Usain Bolt. It was like kind of chilly. I don't think it was raining, but it was like a chilly race. Um, in terms of like the weather and all that. So that's a good point. That's actually a fair point. I'm I'm assuming if this is in Botswana for Tobogo, this is going to be in good, hopefully good weather. Obviously the altitude. But yeah, I agree with you, actual random. I think 30.9 for Tobogo is probably the most likely outcome. If he breaks the world record, man, <laughs> I gotta, I don't know. I gotta look into Tobogo. Tobogo, honestly, not to downplay anyone else. I don't want to downplay anyone else. Tobogo could arguably win double gold at the world championships. Oh, it's in South Africa. So nice. So yeah, South Africa. Um, so Tobogo could win double gold at the world at the Olympic Games this year. Now, I'm not saying that he will, right? Noel Lyles is the clear favorite in the 200. The 100 meter dash, very, very wide open in my opinion right now. So we're going to see. We're going to see. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll be watching Tobogo in a, I'm going to be watching that race. I'm going to definitely tune in. Um, let me get to a couple other questions before we close out. So what are your thoughts on the Jamaicans mostly bypassing indoors? Yeah, I'm not too mad about it. Oh, uh, a note on the Jamaicans. So Akeem Blake is going to, well, I spoke with uh, Michael Frater, his coach. So Akeem Blake is going to be running world indoors as long as he's picked for the Jamaican team, which they should because he has a you know Jamaican lead. So um, according to his coach, Akeem Blake should be running uh, world indoor championships this year. So we're going to see him running world indoors. I think Brianna Williams might be running, not sure, but I'm not too mad. At the end of the day, everyone's focused on outdoors. We've seen many Jamaicans run indoors. Shelly and Fraser Price is a world indoor champion. Veronica Campbell Brown, double world indoor champion. Uh, Sharika Jackson in 2022, she actually ran all the way to the world indoor championships. Elaine Thompson, uh, yeah, Sharika Jackson ran to the world indoor championships in 2022, had that legendary outdoor season. Elaine Thompson Hira back in, um, what was it, 20, I think it was 2018. Um, uh, yeah, 2018, Elaine Thompson Hira, she actually, um, she actually ran the, uh, yeah, she ran the World Indoor Championships. So, um, and apologies, I, I realized, yeah, I couldn't see my screen. So I brought up the 300-meter dash a second ago. I was showing kind of these uh, previous times. So I was talking about it, uh, was talking about it. But yeah, Elaine Thompson here, she's running. So I don't know, I'm not too mad if Jamaicans are running the, if they're skipping indoors. Honestly, I'd love to see everyone run indoors, but I also understand in an Olympic year, in a world championship year, out outdoors is always a focus, right? That's where everyone's athletes are focused. That's where the money is. That's where all these things are. So it is what it is. Um, Johan Blake said he's running world indoors as well, but he announced his retirement after the 2024 Paris Games. Not surprised. I mean, you're talking about Johan Blake. He started off in 2009. That was his first season uh, or the, his first prominent season as a pro from what I remember. Um, but 2010, he went crazy right he went crazy and then obviously 2011 the rest was history with what he did at that point um so yeah shout out to johan blake um all right and then yeah do you see a lot of americans making podiums in glasgow i feel internationally they do better at indoor worlds yeah probably um i probably would see a i don't i don't know if it's a lot i, I can't really gauge i mean if we just go through the list of like let's say 60 meter dash Christian Coleman, Noah Lyles are the, you know, they're very much in the mix. Though you do have someone like Ferdinand Omanyala, he's been running well, but very, very likely in the men's 60 meter dash. The men's 400 is a little bit more mixed. Um, I'm not exactly sure if we'll see one of the USA men get on the podium in the 400. Um, 
for the women in the 60 meter dash, if Aaliyah Hobbs and Makai, Makai Briscoe is a silver medalist, so she can very well make the team. Makai, uh, Aaliyah Hobbs very well, I'm sorry, Makai Briscoe can very well get on the podium. Aaliyah Hobbs very well get on the podium. 400 for the women. Mixed bag as well. Femke Bowl is a clear favorite. I, don't, I think Femke Bowl is running this weekend at the Dutch Championships. Could be on the world record watch. Keep a lookout for that. We're going to see. Um, 60 meter hurdles, both the men and the women. Yeah, they very much would be on the podium. So yeah, probably, I think probably we could see a couple Americans on the podium. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how this weekend plays out. Um, so yeah, we're going to see how that goes. Um, yeah, good note on Tobogo. Last year was Tobogo as 2007 was Tobolt. Listen, don't sleep on Tobogo. And he's run 19.50 already. Listen, don't sleep. Do not sleep on Tobogo. If, if Tobogo wins double gold at the Olympic Games, Listen, do not be surprised. Not saying he will. Obviously, we haven't seen the season yet, but do not be surprised. Do not be surprised. Um, all right, so I'll get to these last couple comments. Um, uh, yeah, Johan Blake doesn't get his props for being the second fastest in both the 100 and 200 of all time. Yep, I think the problem with Johan Blake is that he had a super short career. Johan Blake has a world gold medal in 2011. He got the olympic silver in the 100 and the 200 in 2012 and then that's the extent of his medals literally those two years are the only two years that johan blake won individual medals so that's i think that's one of the problems with johan blake even putting in context johan blake has never won a world championship 200 meter medal he never has so that's one of the that's one of the issues i think with uh johan blake's career where it was super super impactful but because of his injury it was super super short but huge shout out to johan blake he's a stand-up guy he's like super super humble and i he's has his water company he's a, an amazing person um and then yeah let's finish off yeah femke bowl could take a sunday stroll and accidentally break the world record yeah i mean she's already run 49.63 this year and 49.69 very much ahead of pace we're going to see what happens tomorrow, or I'm sorry, this weekend with uh, Femke Bull, you know, at the Dutch Championships. I think she is very much going for the world record there. And then World Indoor, she just needs to get the gold medal. So we're going to see. We're going to see when that happens. But um, all right. Yeah. So I thought this would be pretty quick. I thought I'd be able to go through quick, but, you know, we we went through, took a little bit more time than I expected. But regardless, huge shout out to you all for, for coming through. Huge shout out to um, all the athletes who are competing at World uh, USA Indoors this weekend. Um, also, shout out to all the athletes who are competing at various different meets around the world, whether it's indoor um, national championships, whether it's one-off meets, all those athletes leading up to, um, you know, the World Indoor Championships. And then also all the athletes who are uh, sitting out and preparing for the outdoor season. Really excited. Um, always stay tuned. I'm going to be at the World. I won't be at USA's tomorrow or this weekend, but I'm going to be at the World Indoor Championships coming up in a couple weeks. So stay tuned for that. But always, always appreciate y'all. Um, and yeah, be sure to stay tuned. Um, and be sure to like this uh, like this video if you haven't already. Make sure you like the live. Make sure you like the videos. They're always going to help me out to be able to push it out to other people. But yeah, appreciate y'all and I'll see y'all soon.